so let's move on to that. Uh, I've rearranged my uh, uh, my Excel a little bit more, so I've categorized it, and I'll just go over the the feedback that I have uh, with you guys. Uh, I'll just let him know. Uh, MBRB. We have categorized it, so it looks a little bit different. I'll first show you the detailed feedback that we had. Uh, because, so, wait, this is still being reported, so that has not been fixed. This has been... Uh, yeah, this is something else. Alright. So, let me switch over to in-game and my display capture. So, this is what you saw last time around. This was added up until... here I think there was a little bit more uh, well a lot less um, but yeah this was the sheet from last time uh, server performance has been addressed server performance is fine it's just the, the in-game hit rack which I've added uh, buying modified weapons uh, if you have added attachments gave you an error message that's not the case anymore and the EC thing, thing is, uh, is fixed as well Uh, but yeah, there's there's obviously more bugs and stuff going on. Uh, I actually just noticed that I kept a lot of stuff double because I made one for bugs and categorized overview. Anyways, this is the interesting one to look at because I try to include the feedback that at least I received from other people, but also stuff that I noticed myself. Uh, and yeah, like I said, the feedback is in order from importance from left to right. Top to bottom I should remove because that's currently not the case. Because I kept everything in one line. Um, this is the main issue. If this stuff, the stability issues, if that gets fixed, they can start with open beta. It's simple as that. The, the rest, uh, the rest is all stuff that you can fix pretty easily, but this is the stuff that will get people away. This stuff will keep people away because the game will just be shit. So the sound bug, I think a lot of you have experienced this. A lot of you have experienced issues with the sound. And yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the standard was at 32 channel uh, is what it was set at. And that one is broken. 64 channels broken. 128 channel is broken. <laughs> the only thing that's not broken is the 16 channel. So yeah, in my opinion, they, they should just remove the other issues or just make 16 defaults. I mean, the easiest thing is just to make 16 defaults so most people won't run into that. Because, let, let's be honest, the sound issues have been are in the other versions as well. And they've been there for many, many years. So, I don't know if this is an easy fix. Um, but it would at least help if the 16 becomes default. So, not everyone complains about it. And people will complain about it after they try something else. And be like, oh, this is not good. And then just go back to 16. You know? So, that is, uh, that is a big issue. Uh, FPS stutters. I ran into a couple of FPS stutters. Not a lot. I've heard from other people that they had more issues with that. But um, sometimes the FPS is a little bit unstable. And I feel like that's more the case in Steam Ava than it is in Taiwan AVA. So that's why I noted that down. Uh, Windows 11 support. There were quite some users that, w that have Windows 11 that couldn't play the game. Or where the game was incredibly unstable. Um, so that is also something worth noting. And yeah, perhaps even the biggest issue, the hit registry. Uh, the hit registry was really, really bad. And I think that's got everything to do with the servers being so much better that the game itself is not coded to handle with servers of this magnitude because the servers are quite good. I tested them. They were around about 50 hertz, which is quite good. Uh, but yeah, if you have hit registry coded for 16 tick, and you now go to 50 tick and you don't change the hit registry. Yeah, I'm not surprised that some hits just don't register at all. Because that lets me real. The way AVA is coded, you'll never get rid of no regs. So that's not the issue here. The issue here is that some shots or some bullets just don't connect at all. So I'm not talking about no regs, but I'm talking about not regs. Stuff that literally does not register. So those are the main issues for me. And yeah, the, the stability issues, I think, should be addressed first before you can move to uh, to anything else. 
That covers this. Then I have pay to win leftovers. Um, this is this is also quite a big issue to me. Uh, but the good thing is that this is easier to fix because it's literally just changing some stats and pictures. Uh, the only thing is that this is quite time consuming. So I don't think that they should fully fix this before uh, the game goes live again. Uh, but they can do that uh, on the go because it also depends on what skins you're going to release. Um, yeah, the skins with the extra ammo, I think is the most important thing. The extra ammo is really not a good thing. Like, if you have one extra ammo for Sniper, it doesn't really matter. But we saw, for example, the FNTPS, the skin. It went from 8 to 11 bullets. That's quite an issue. The, uh, the M4A1, 5 extra bullets from 30 to 35. That's a lot. The MP7 from 45 to 50, which is still quite an increase. And the Parrot from 27 to 30 is also still quite a lot. I mean, let's be real, it's an 11.1% increase of ammo. And, yeah, that's that's still quite a bit. Um, for me, it had 30 bullets. And, yeah, the, the extra bullets, the 15 for FR, is also too many. But that, that's not what I'm, I'm talking about here. That's something that I've uh, listed somewhere else. Uh, but not there. Uh, then the character boosted stats. Characters, yeah, have not been touched up until this point. And I think they should be touched. Uh, because characters give you, well, increased stats. I mean, the good thing is that the characters are not pay to win. Because you can just get them in the shop. And if you get a different skin, it doesn't mean that the other boosts are up. So that's good. Uh, but the fact that a certain appointment skin gives you more stabbing damage or... A rifleman character that gives you more movement speed or more accuracy or a sniper character that gives you more pistol damage is just plain stupid. So that has to be removed. And the good thing is that is an easy fix. So that shouldn't uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, then the jackpot items with plus damage. Um, I think some of you might have noticed that with the MP71 Nightflyer. As soon as you got a kill, you got plus one damage. You got another kill, plus two damage. Another kill, plus three damage. And that, that's, that's the cap of it. And that was per round, obviously, as well. Uh, that's something that they must remove. Uh, but that's something that I already talked about with Neowiz last week. And as far as I know, they will remove that. So I'm, I'm already happy about that. Um, yeah. I think I've, uh, I've trash-talked this gun enough uh, last week. And um, they just need to get rid of it. There's, there's just no place for an incendiary grenade launcher rifle in this game. So they need to remove it. Done. And then the RNG damage, the damage variation. You notice for a lot of guns, it says the damage is 43. And then between brackets, it says minus 3 plus 3. Which means that the damage is not 43. But the damage is between 40 and 46 per bullet. I don't know whoever invented that system. But that's hella dumb. And they have to remove that. So that's why I also list that here. It's not really a pay to win leftover because it's within all the gun stats. Uh, but I listed it here because it's such a big issue. And they need to change that. Um, next bit. Quality of life. I have quite a few things listed here. Um, yeah, so let's just dive straight into them. But this is just to make the game more enjoyable for people and give you more options for stuff to play with. And that has to do obviously with the custom crosshairs. Uh, on Kava, if you go to their website, you can change like the color, you can choose a different, a few different crosshairs. I believe even the static crosshair that they have. Um, so I don't see why they can't implement that if it's already in other versions. So they have to do that. Um, this was a suggestion I heard a lot from people. Uh, a lot of people complain about the armor being too powerful and that they want an older version, uh, older version of armor. Now, personally, I don't really care about that. Uh, but because I heard so many people talk about that, I figured this would be a good idea to list that. Uh, and I think it's worth testing with, with other armor versions to see what works best. Because I think a lot of the people that gave this feedback are people that used to play the game. And I don't really know what new players say. So that's why I'm not really sure if it's an issue or if people think it's an issue because they've played the old game and they say, hey, it's it's different. Or if it's actually an issue, if you get what I mean. 
So I think it's worth testing uh, instead of just straight up implementing something else. Because we have 09, uh, 14 and 16 in the game. And I think it's worth experimenting with that uh, before they want to make any changes to that, in my opinion. Then improved in-game UI. This is something I've already talked about with Neowiz. And this is something that came up to me earlier this week before the, the CBT playtest. Uh, DocTech had a different in-game UI, which was, well, more modern and much more minimalistic. And I'm like, why don't we use this for Steam Alpha? If Neowiz has the assets, we might as well take over the in-game UI from DocTech. Because let's be real, the in-game UI in AVA DocTech was actually really good looking. It was just the lobby UI that was completely horrible, but the in-game one was very good. So that's why I also noted that down here. I think this is something that they should should change because it just looks more modern. And it also shuts up all the people like, Oh, the game doesn't look any different. Yeah, no shit, it's a reboot. What the fuck do you expect? But to also address those haters, change the UI with something you already have, and which is quite good. Then public channels reopened. I don't think I need to say anything more about that. This is a must. End of story. Voice chat in ranked. Uh, I heard quite a few people talk about voice chat as well. And uh, yeah, getting that implemented. And I don't really know how Neo was, sees that. But to be fair, voice chat only really matters in ranked. Uh, in the other more casual game modes, a lot of people will probably not use them. And it'll just become a rage fest and whatnot. I think in ranked it is much better to have such a system. But then again, if you're queuing in ranked, you mostly are on uh, on some sort of voice channel, whether that's Teamspeak or Discord or whatever the hell. So I'm not sure if this is necessary for me personally. I really couldn't care less because I would not use voice chat in the game. Uh, but I do think a lot of people will care about it. So I think uh, it would be good to implement it, at least for ranked. Then bug fixes. I said see bugs tab. So if I go to my bugs tab, these are the bugs that I've listed so far. They're, they're not really a lot of bugs, at least that I noticed, uh, which is good. It was mostly the stability that was, uh, that was putting me off. So bugs I listed like a wrong skin, invisible weapons, but that will get fixed. The repair cost, if that even is a bug. The bug in Scorpion, well, which ruins Escort. Uh, the Para bug, which is quite a big bug. Hammer Blow bug, which has been in for many, many years. Um, player Side Mode Metal, which has been in there for many, many years. Localization Arrow, which is a minute of work. This I haven't seen in other versions, so they should look into that as well, because that can screw up games. And the Weapon Pass progress as well as just small bugs. So I think those things are quite easy to fix. Uh, but they're still very important to uh, to uh, to make it better. Then if I go back, uh, again, quality of life. I noted permanent grenades. Uh, the nades are timed. I don't see why. It's just a money sink. Just give us permanent grenades and let us choose what we want to choose. And if you want a different nade, then buy another nade in the shop, which is permanent as well. Like, it makes no sense that after playing the game, let's say... I think if it's even three months... And a grenade, the usage of a grenade will be more than the usage of a weapon in the shop. Because then you'll reach the shop purchase item of a shop weapon. Uh, and it's dumb. So, permanent grenades, end of story. Done. More maps and game modes. Uh, obviously, we'll get that and obviously this makes sense. More classic weapons. Obviously, we'll get that and obviously that makes sense. So, there's not much that I need to talk about that. Um, removing aim punch, uh, this is something that I was talking, uh, to, uh, well, I was talking with Snow Shovel with Carl earlier on today, uh, and he mentioned that aim punch is quite a big issue. I'm still not fully sure if that has to do with the armor as well, because it could be, uh, but he mentioned, yeah, rifles and pointmen shouldn't have any aim punch, and, uh, snipers, uh, should have. And for the people that don't know what aim punch is, aim punch is if you get hit, your crosshair, like, flinches up a little bit. That's what aim punch is. And depending on the type of weapon or what you get hit by, the aim punch is more or less. Um, and yeah, he argues that it shouldn't be a thing for rifles or pointments. Uh, personally, I don't really notice it. But then again, I've been playing this game for over a decade. So these are kind of things that I just don't notice anymore. But I've heard quite some people um, argue about that. So uh, I listed that as well. So it's something that Neo is, uh, should at least look into. 
then uh, th this one I probably need to explain. Uh, the tagging, uh, what tagging means is if you hit, if you hit someone, this person's movement will become slower, which is called tagging. Uh, and what uh, Carl mentioned as well, the tagging is coded in a binary way at the moment. So if you get hit, your movement just slows down. And every time you get hit, the same amount, it slows down. You have tagging in CSGO as well, but the tagging works quite on a basic level, as far as you've told me. And what he mentioned would be better to add a decay, uh, which apparently is very easy to do coding-wise, so that after you get hit, your movement speed will pick up again slowly but surely instead of it just sticking around and just making sure that you get like somewhat stuck which uh is something uh yeah they should also look into then this a ping limit and quick match uh, i heard a lot of people complain about uh several users being in the wrong servers and this this is an issue especially in quick match they should just put in a ping limit i think the ping limit in the old version is 130 and a ping limit with a one with uh, of a 130 would be fine, I think, in quick match. It doesn't exclude any regions, as far as I'm aware. It might exclude... Actually, it might exclude some areas. It might exclude some regions in Australia and some in South Africa. And maybe some South American countries if they don't have good servers. But then again, if you apply this, then that doesn't really matter. So I think a ping limit overall outweighs the bad so i think there should be uh, a ping limit in, uh, in in quick match in general at least then the chat filter upgrade um i already heard that this is something that uh, uh, is uh, being looked at by neowiz and was not fully integrated in this uh, cbt playtest build uh, but yeah the chat filter is uh, still quite basic and uh, we need some more stuff for that then the next bit first gonna have a sip because I'm uh, trying out. <clears throat> that was necessary. Uh, replacing advanced map versions. Um, what we saw, especially in the test that we had last week, we had both the old and the advanced versions. And during the playtest, we only had the old versions. Personally, I think it's good if... Uh, if Neo is either makes a survey where people can choose between the old or the advanced versions, or just put in the advanced versions. And I personally would be in favor of putting in the advanced versions because these are just the same maps, but they've re received either slight reworks, bug fixes, um, st stability issues, so the, the maps run smoother. And uh, what, what I want to say as well, uh, yeah, graphical uh, graf graphics-wise, it's updated. So... Those are all reasons to use the advanced versions over the other ones. So I would just say, just use the advanced versions, end of story. To me, it makes no sense to have both versions of a map because if you take Aslan, for example, the Aslan, the regular and the advanced version, the map is 100% identical. The only difference is that the advanced version has better graphics. Same story with dual side. The map is... 99.5% identical, some boxes are different, and the map looks better. Only maps like Hammerblow and Airplane have distinct differences. So Hammerblow, the tank placement inside one side is different, and the, uh, what's it called, the warehouse is different, because you can only move in, if you move in from EU, you can only go to the left side, and you can no longer go via the right side. Um, yeah, and, and with airplane, like I said, on the extra corridor from base. Uh, all the other advanced versions are just graphical updates. So it makes no sense to have both versions of the map in the game. So I would advocate just throw in the advanced versions and throw out the olds because, yeah, there's no use. Then uh, improved loading screen UI. Uh, this is something that I thought of myself. I haven't heard anyone speak of it, but the loading screen in Dogtag also looked a lot more modern uh, than the one that we currently have in the old game. And uh, so I would suggest, at least for Neos, to look at that because it just looks nicer. It's it's quite a non-issue, um, but yeah, maybe some more some people will uh, will like that. So that's why I listed that as well. Then the next three are more important and stuff that I definitely heard from people multiple times, especially this one, custom FOV options. 
A lot of people want to fiddle around with the FOV because otherwise the game looks weird in their opinion. Well, for me, the game looks weird if I change the FOV, so <laughs> it goes both ways. Uh, but a lot of people like to customize their game. And especially if you look at other FPS titles, this is pretty much, yeah, normal in all the other ways, uh, in all the other games around. So I think it would be good to look into that. As far as I know, for AVA, there's like some cap to it uh, because the FOV can't be adjusted by too much before it breaks the game. Um, but yeah, like Bunny also mentions, DogTag had this FOV option, so just have the same FOV option as DogTag and. Yeah, if people complain that that isn't enough, well, this is what the game can handle, so that's that, you know? The DAS definitely should listen to problems, but the game also has some limits. And yeah, with the FOV, we know it's possible to have more FOVs, so just include it. Then these two, these two also come from uh, talking to Carl. Um, the increased move shot and jump shot uh, to increase... Uh, yeah, increasing uh, move shot, jump shot penalties. Uh, move shotting and jump shotting is still very, very easy to do. And that's something that should be nerfed without diving into that too deep. I think most people will agree. And character visibility, uh, I've heard from Carl as well from Snow Shovel that this was an issue. Personally, don't notice it myself, but then again, I've been playing the game for so long. Uh, but apparently, there's a very easy way to um, make the characters more visible. By changing some color grading settings. So that's why I listed it in my detailed feedback as well. So that the devs will know what I'm talking about. And make it easier for them to, uh, to understand. Before I move on to the overall suggestions then. Let me take a look at the chat. Uh, Hugis is wondering if Neowis has all the assets and technology from DogTag. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they have some if not all. But I'm not sure about that. Um... Let's see, uh, micro lag, yeah, I had that a little bit as well, but that's like the stutters that I listed. Uh, refresh rate, I don't think I have listed, uh, but this is. And then, uh, 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 there, those are the two. I also heard a lot of people talk about the FPS uh, limit to 200, and yeah, I heard Red uh, say back in the days that this was apparently an issue and that wouldn't be possible to change it. Uh, but I've heard from people that have changed it via another way that it doesn't doesn't break the game. So yeah, unlocking the FPS limits, then you can also accept refresh rates of more than 200 hertz. So that's something that uh, should be looked into as well. Then I move on to overall suggestions. Uh, these are just suggestions in general that I think Neo should look at or at least experiment with uh, in order to yeah, make the game uh, just a little bit nicer overall, just to have some more additions uh, and, and balancing uh, uh, fixes. Uh, first of the weapon ticket system, uh, we talked about this extensively a week ago. And what I've noticed is that the sentiment has changed. Like we talked about this a week ago and Everyone, everyone I spoke to absolutely despised this. Everyone hated it. And now when I talk to people, most of them don't really care. <laughs> most people honestly don't really care anymore. So I'm not really sure what has to happen. Uh, well, I've listed something uh, on the on the next tab. So I'll dive into it a little bit deeper. Uh, but my suggestion overall is to, to look into the weapon ticket system and just see what the feedback is uh, uh, on that. But I'll dive in, uh, into that a little bit more in a bit. Then the old UAV ranks in-game, uh, especially requested a lot from the players in Europe and North America. Uh, what we have to understand here as well is that um, Asia also has access to the game. And the Asian players are used to the ranks that we currently have. So I am not sure if this will ever change, uh, but I think the first step for this is to see what the sentiment is in the Asian version. So especially Chinese users, what is their um, what is their view on having different ranks? And I think a lot will depend on their feedback, whether this is ever going to change or not. If you personally want my opinion, I don't think this is going to change. I personally don't think it's gonna change. 
because I don't think that the Chinese users will want it to change. Um, but this is something that we should, uh, that Neo should look into. And uh, yeah, Bunny and I can help out with that. So uh, hopefully we can do some sort of survey in which we can ask the Chinese players for some uh, specific feedback as well. Especially on this. And this, the name length and the special characters. This is something we talked about today on Discord. Um, the name length currently is 10 characters and special characters are not allowed. Uh, special characters are allowed in Taiwan. Which is interesting. And the name length, I think, in Taiwan is a little bit longer as well. Uh, I can just look real quick and see how long some people's names are. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10. Um, this. Yeah, because the characters, it looks longer, but it really isn't. Uh, it might actually be 10 here as well, if I look at it. This is 10 too. I think it's the same in other versions, actually. See that they use stars here in their names, and like brackets. But yeah, brackets, they, that shouldn't be allowed. Because that, this, this is just GM or staff impersonation, and this should 100% be banned. And this is probably also why uh, we currently don't have that, because people will 100% abuse this. Yeah, I think the character limit... Yeah, it's also 10 in the other versions. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, uh, I think... Uh, because you also have to keep the UI into consideration what it can support. I think if you up it to 12, it's still possible. Uh, but yeah, we just saw the Asian characters are a lot longer. So that might break the UI if, uh, if it's allowed to 12 or more. So... This depends on what Neowis has to say about it, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if this, this doesn't change just because it's not uh, not possible. Then cosmetics for armor. This is something that I talked uh, to Snow Shovel about as well. Um, it's, it's a really easy way to monetize armor if you just make sure, because let, let's be real, AV has uh, six armor parts. Do I say that right? Six armor parts. Say you have this helmet, and you can buy a skin for this helmet that gives it a little color. And you just sell that. Like, that's that's an easy way to, to make money for the game, and also make the game more sustainable. So I think that's a really easy way to, uh, to make some more money, uh, as you could say. Uh, same with founder packages. They should definitely put in founder packages as soon as OBT releases. Some sort of yearly Steam DLC package, seasonal DLC packages... I think DLC packages really is the way to go in order to uh, to make the game more sustainable and to bring in some revenue for Neowiz instead of having pay to win, which we now don't have. So I think that's uh, that's a good call. Um, yeah, then older models. This is something that I heard a lot of people, especially in Discord, talk about. They don't like the MK5 models, the Mark V models for the M4A1 and the AK47. Uh, I think I can show you a little bit of a comparison for that I think I can uh, because this is an MK4 model and I think if I go all the way down I should have an MK5 model uh, no no this is even better this is an MK4 model uh, do I have the MK5 model in my inventory otherwise I just gotta buy it oh this is an MK5 model here, I'll show you the difference in game. It's still a skin, but you can see the difference in the model. So this is a, the MK5 model. This is the sound. And this is the MK4 model. A lot of people prefer this because the sound and the looks of the gun uh, are much better. Which is why people would suggest this model uh, uh, instead. And the same thing is with the AK. I believe I have both as well. Again with a skin, but I should have both as well. Uh, this is either an MK3 or an MK4 model. Wait, I need to equip it here. Uh, where's my MK5? This is also this is an MK3. MK3 again, same skin. This is the MK5. I think this is actually an MK3, by the way, but the MK3 and 4 look quite alike. So, 
This is the MK5, and this is the sound that comes with it. So that. This is the MK4. So this is more of a line, actually. But yeah, for the AK, you can see the looks are pretty much the same. They're not really different. So for the AK, it's not that much of an issue. But... Uh, for the M4, the, the changes are enormous. So that's why a lot of people are suggesting to go back to the MK4 models instead of the MK5 models. Then we go back. Uh, this is a mode that's only available in Kava. And it's called a headshot only mode. I think this is only in free for all at the moment. Um, it has a headshot only mode and a pistol only mode. Uh, so headshots is pistol. Uh, this is only for free for all uh, game mode in Kava, but I think that's like a cool little feature for uh, for people to play around with, especially the headshot only mode, because I think a lot of pros would use that as a warm up then. Then uh, probably one of the questions as I have received the most in the last one and a half weeks, a server for South America. Um, yeah, like I've pretty much told every user, if there is demand, then we should consider it. That's that. There's not more to say about it. If there is enough players in South America that can sustain a server in South America, I'd say that Neowish should do it. If the numbers are not there, then they shouldn't do it because then from a business side of view, it doesn't make sense. So that's the story on the server for South America. But I still think this is something that should not be overlooked in the suggestions, which is why I wrote it down here as well. Uh, I can assure you, however, that Neowish is very aware of this. And they are uh, looking at how big uh, the South American player base is to kind of work out for themselves if it's sustainable uh, or not. And then two things that I talked about earlier with Yorak. Um, the T13 smoke, which expires very quickly. And the Molotov, which only does 6 damage per tick. And they should probably increase with like 2 or 3 more. Uh, I'm not sure if this smoke is also in this version. Let me check. Oh, should go to the right one. Uh, no, it's actually not even in this version. Surprisingly, we have more smoke grenades than Taiwan AVA. We have more knives than Taiwan AVA. And we have more pistols than Taiwan AVA. Which is quite interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I can't show you, uh, show you that, unfortunately. Uh, the Asian server Carbon Code is the largest server in the game. So they are 100% not going to do that. <laughs> and then the last thing. I think this is good to also discuss with you guys on stream. Because I'm quite curious what the feedback is on the weapon ticket system now. And I think I'll do a quick poll for that in a bit again. And it's about the weapon ticket system. Um... Yeah, when we talked about this a week ago, everyone was highly against it and nobody liked it. Uh, but now we've all experienced it. I think most people don't really care. And what I personally think is I don't think they should remove it at this stage. Uh, because it again, it, it falls a little bit in their monetization model as well. And there's only a few things that can break the game. That's the thing. So, yeah. This is the first thing, like, Rifleman has 7 rolls, Pointman Sniper has 6. They, that shouldn't be different. They both should have the same amount of rolls. And I think to prevent OP rolls, they should make a limitation, right? You get 5 points in total. Uh, but I think if you get 5 for a specific stat, that's just way too much. And I think it's much better to lower it to plus 3 per stat that you can get as a max. Because that limits the amount of stuff that you can get. And it also, um, yeah, uh, uh, increases your odds of getting a roll that makes sense for you. So I think that would be better. And this, to me, is the biggest issue with it. The way that the stats are currently calculated, I think is not good. Especially if you take a look at damage. Uh, if you get plus one damage as a roll, you get plus one damage. So for a sniper, that means uh, you have 140 damage. You get plus one, you get 141 damage. That's useless. On the other hand, for appointment, a weapon that has 28 damage gets 29 damage. 
Do you see the issue here? So for appointment, this system is very favorable. Like for appointments on damage, this system is incredibly OP. For ROF, not so much, but for damage, uh, uh, for damage specifically, this system is incredibly broken. For riflemen, this system doesn't really matter. It doesn't really do much, except if you have a para and you put all in recoil control, then the para has a lot less recoil. And then if you go over to snipers, if you change the ROF or the rate of fire, then the gun becomes a lot faster. And that is especially a huge issue for the secondary scope that we have in the game for the Dragunov. Say, I, I believe the thing has like 1.8 ROF on default or like 2. But if you get like a plus 5 stat roll, this I think goes to like 2.9 or to 3. That's like a 40 or 50% ROF increase. That's insanely stupid. So what I suggest here, and I think that's one of the things that they need to rework the weapon ticket system on, is they need to calculate it based on percentage increased and not on base stats increased. So it shouldn't say you get plus one damage. No, you get a four or five percent damage boost, something like that. I think that would be more fair and that makes it more fair for all the other weapons as well. But if they do that, they also have to make sure that they do this limited to plus three stats maximum because otherwise you can get that let, let's say it's four percent you can get a max of like say a 20 percent well that, that's way too much actually let's use two percent i think that's better so two percent then it can go max to a 10 percent boost say you get a plus five roll on the m19 then the m19 will always one shot and then the m19 is broken so the, the, the problem with this ticket system, I think, is is not necessarily that it's bad, but it's very, very easy to break this system, which is why I'm still not a fan of this system. I don't think this weapon system will necessarily cause the game to fail. I think a lot of casual players will actually like it, uh, but it is very easy to still break this system. So I still am not a fan of it. Uh, but yeah, for this system to be removed, a vast majority of the player base will have to be against the ticket system. And as it is right now, they simply aren't. Most of the people are actually in, fan, in favor of this weapon ticket system at the moment. So I honestly don't see it uh, getting removed. Would make no sense because the data suggests otherwise. Um, so that would mean that they need to improve the system. And I think this is the way to, uh, to improve that system. And I think that we have everything, at least all the stuff that I want to, wanted to talk about. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to add here a, a suggestion, make the stats non-RNG, because that's something that I've heard before as well, and I think it's good to suggest it as well. Um, yeah, that means we've covered everything. That means I'll now dive into some questions in the chat. So stuff that you guys want to talk about. Um, you use 40 tickets to get the perfect stats. Then you must have been very lucky, Yellow, because I've heard of some people that did over four or 500 rolls to get a perfect plus five roll. Um, limited to plus two, I think is too low. Then the system might as well be removed. Uh, how about nades? Uh, I listed buffing two nades, and I've listed permanent grenades. Um, maybe not allowed to increase damage. What what else can you increase then for pointman? Um, well, they have a weapon rerun. No idea what you mean. Uh, if that makes a free weapon able to compete with pay-to-win weapon, then it's going to be okay. Well, there's no pay-to-win in the game, so that's irrelevant, Hyper Beast. That's the removal of F3. Yeah, not going to happen. Going to take a sip of your drink in a bit. Uh, the nade throws have been the same ever since. So I don't know why you're talking about the old throw, uh, but it's literally the same as it's always been. So I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, do you think they always will listen to our feedback? Um... Well, as you clearly saw, they have already listened to our feedback because, let's be real, a lot of people were very positive of, uh, yeah, positive about the CBT, and they have made a lot of changes that are better for the game and not necessarily for their wallets. 
And I think moving forward as well, you have to balance the two as well because the game needs to be better in general and then it will also generate more revenue. And I think NeoWiz understands that. Um, but yeah, some stuff is linked to monetization, so some stuff might be more more tricky to do. Uh, and I think it's very simple. Like if NeoWiz uh, makes changes according to what the community says, that's fine. Uh, but if there's stuff that they don't want to change, even though the community wants it, then Neowis needs to have very good reasons for it, personally. Because otherwise, I don't think that's uh, that's a good idea.